release of 1.3 coming really quickly. We, mom, what are you doing? Stop them! All right. <laughs> With the release of 1.3 coming really quickly to Genshin Impact. We have speculation about Hu Tao coming still. We have all this drama going on, but most of all, let's look at what's right in front of us, right? You're probably asking, ah, Whisk Chan, what can it be? What are you even talking about? Well, as you do know, if you know your boy Whisk Chan, you already know what this is about. Whether you should go for Zhao or Kaching. And now, this is not even something I should ask, but there are players out there that are probably asking, is Kaching worth summoning for? Because her rates are rated up. She's rated up. She's a rated up 5-star character. Now, there's a lot I want to discuss in this video. So, we're going to go ahead and get right into this. But before we do, if you are new to the channel, you just popped in here and you see this this bang of video, go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below. We are on the way to hitting 2,700, almost 3K, baby. So let's go ahead and hit that button down below and hit the notification bell to be notified of all my daily uploads. And also smash the like button down below because you're going to enjoy this content. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into today's video. As it was stated, yes, y'all already know how this is working. Uh, I've been over a lot of videos of speculation for Hu Tao and whatnot for the mere fact that these banners, both of these banners are only going to be two weeks. So this leads me to believe that it's going to be another banner that's going to uphill or uphold for two weeks. But we don't quite know that yet, but we will know that in update 1.3 because this is, they did say it was a two out of three of the update, meaning there is another piece of the update that we are not informed about. Meaning there is a chance that it's Hu Tao. So what I have to say about this is basically um, it's going to be a really new thing going on in 1.3 with this banner. How they're working the banner system. We don't know if this is permanent. We don't know if they're going to just continuously put banners out and you know have the banners for two weeks. And then put a stall banner in between and then put a new ba new character banner. We don't know if they're going to do that. But if they do that would be pretty, pretty cool I think. Because it would give you know free to play players a little bit more time to probably save for that character but at the same time you know uh, I feel like it would just be too much for them to do in my opinion maybe the this is just for the you know festival but also this is a new way way they want to do their system you know three three characters one of them obviously being a character that we already have in the standard banner but like you know two new characters and then one you know standard banner character every single patch that would be pretty cool but at the same time I don't really I mean I'm a I'm a fan of it semi but at the same time really not because really what they're used used for is basically uh, What is the word? It's just to get a lot of money or to either you know waste waste primal gems because in my opinion these characters can be achieved like you know Kaching, Diluc, Jean, all these five star characters in the standard banner can be achieved on the standard banner. And if you do not know, if you level up characters, you can acquire a quaint faint from leveling up the characters. And then you could just do some summons on the, you know, standard banner and hopefully you get lucky. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather you not waste primal gems on a rated up five star unless you really like that five star, unless you really want that five star. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying though, basically they're probably gonna start doing that, or they might just be doing this for the festival and it's gonna be a big event as they're releasing Zhao and most likely Hu Tao at the end of it. Probably take that with a hand of salt. But yeah, so it's gonna be pretty insane. But what I really want to go over is Kaching really worth summoning for. And her versus Zhao should be a clear answer, but I'm going to discuss it anyway for those viewers out there that don't know much about these characters or, you know, of that of that nature, basically. So I'm definitely going to be here for that, and yeah. So first things first, I want to go over the characters in depth and basically describe what each of them is used for. They're actually both extremely, extremely good characters. Kaching is an insane character, and she could go both ways with her build. And if you don't know what I mean, she could go an element build or, or element damage build, or she can go just straight physical damage. And that's that's why she is so unique. And she's a really, really good, really good character. As if you've, if you've seen the YouTube videos on where she literally, you know, kills the boss in one DPS window, it's absolutely insane how she could just like destroy a boss with just physical damage. And Zhao, as we've seen, he's still being worked on, but he is about to be finalized really, really soon. But he is an extremely good character as well. Extremely hype character at that because he is the Yaksha. He's so cool. His like all his like his voice actor is amazing. The character concept is amazing. The design's amazing. His description's amazing, and he's two thousand years old. <laughs> if that even matters. 
But yeah, so there's a lot to discuss in this video. We're going to have to, I'm going to put timestamps in the description below. So make sure you check that out if you want to skip ahead to see some things. But anyway, let's go ahead and get right into these characters. First, we will get into Kaching since she is a bit of a surprise for 1.3. Okay, guys, as you do know, uh, Kaching is a five-star sword user. I'm pretty sure everybody knows about her, but if you don't know about her, for all my new players out there, I'm going to explain everything. First of all, if you want to pause to see this decision materials, if you have her or if you plan to get her, uh, this is it right here. But before you even plan to get her, let me give you my opinion. So anyway, she's a pretty good character, scaling off of crit damage as her stat progression, which is actually really good. Sets up for good either more crit damage builds if you have a crit rate weapon, or just sets up for a crit rate build with a lot of crit damage on the substats. It depends on what you want to play or how you want to play her. And yeah, she has really good atta uh, base attack as well as base HP. It's pretty good, especially for a DPS and really good base defense. So anyway, let's go ahead and go over this character. Uh, basically right here, this is our elemental skill. This is where she has a hold wall. Well, it's basically you can press or hold but when you hold you can adjust the direction of where you put the stiletto and it shall be thrown the stilettos thrown by the hold attack mode can be suspended in mid-air allowing keking or kaching to jump in them using stellar restoration a second time so basically how this works if you do not know she literally if you hold you can put it in the air like above your enemy and then teleport right there dealing electro aoe damage and then you could smack down or you could like do plunk damage or whatever but like what you have to do is you have to hold and then go in the air and then press E again and then it'll you know teleport you up there dealing electro damage and then if you're there you could just you know do plunge damage so it's a pretty good little technique I like it it's pretty cool it can be used as a versatile not only for attacks but also to get places if you want to you know think of it that way but anyway the lightning st uh, stiletto if Kaching uses stellar restoration again or use the charge attack while its duration lasts it will clear the stiletto mark and produce different effects. If she uses stellar restoration again, she will blink to the location. If she presses E and then press E again, she will teleport to the location and unleash one slashing attack that deals AOE electro damage. And when blinking to a stiletto that was thrown from a holding attack, uh, Kaching can leap across obstructing terrain. If Kaching used a charge attack, she will ignite a series of thundering cuts at the mark's location, dealing AOE electro damage. So that's one thing to know about this character. She's a really unique character. And like I said, she can go both ways with builds, whether that's if you want a lot of electro damage, because she can do a lot of electro damage, trust me. Or if you want a lot of physical damage, because she is an insane physical DPS, for the fact that um, her charge attack, it, it literally does massive amount of damage. And the re like, look at, look at the charge attack damage. It does massive amount of damage. So definitely spamming this would be very ideal. Um, this is what mainly most kicking or kaching physical DPS mains do. They spam a lot of uh, charge attacks because of the damage the uh, percentage does. So it's a lot. And then they do, you know, the one to five hit if they need a stall to get, you know, their stamina back. So anyway, definitely she has a really, really good, really high charge attack damage percentage. And also, you know, with a physical build, it will be just so good. And then she has a lot of crit damage already. You put more crit damage on her with a crit rate weapon or you have crit rate and then just like uh, build crit damage on the subsets of your artifacts. It'll be really, really extremely good. So anyway, we have her elemental burst, which is pretty unique for the fact of how it works. Uh, Kaching unleashes the power of lightning dealing electro damage in an AoE. She then blends into the shadow of her blade, striking a series of thunderclap blows to nearby opponents simultaneous, uh, simultaneously that deal multiple instances of electro damage. The final attack deals massive AoE electro damage. So skills damage can go from, you know, level 188 to level 10, 158, or, you know, level 6, 123, level 15, 209%. Now, the reason it's so low is because it has a consecutive slash damage, which does, you know, damage while you're doing it. Like, it, it, it does the skill damage, right? And then it does the consecutive slash damage, right? And then it does the last damage, as you can see. So if you're level 6, for example, skills damage will be 123%. Then this consecutive slashes that you will do will be 33.6%. And, or times 8, of course, right there, because you're doing 8 slashes, of course. Remember that. And then also the last damage will be 264.32%, which is a lot of damage for the final blow. The cooldown is 12 seconds, the energy causes 40, and that is the reason some players, or maybe most players, build Kaching with the Electro build. Is the, re the reason why is because she has such a low energy cost, so getting her energy back is not a problem at all, especially if, if you have an energy battery like Albedo on the field, or like Venti or whatnot on the field. It will be absolutely insane, easy, really, really easy to get the energy back and to be able to spam her Star Wars Sword or Elemental Burst and do tons of Electro damage especially a really really good electro build on your kaching so definitely this character is, is really really good and also let's go over the passives real quick after 
recasting Stellar Restoration, which is an elemental skill. While a Lightning Stiletto is present, Kaching's weapon gains an Electro Infusion for 5 seconds. So basically, after recasting Stellar Restoration, while a Lightning Stiletto is present, you will literally have Electro Infusion on your sword, meaning you'll be dealing Electro Damage, which is extremely good, because like I said, if you have an Electro build on her, and you have an Energy Battery on the team, she doesn't really even need an Energy Battery, but having one will be pretty beneficial. You will do tons of Electro Damage, like tons of Electro Damage. And then also the Aristocratic Dignity, her uh, other passive, when casting Starward Sword, which is Elemental Burst, Kaching's crit rate is increased by 15%, and her energy recharge is increased by 15%. This effect lasts for 8 seconds. Now you're probably saying, whoa, that's kind of broken. Not broken, but broken, because of the fact that not only is she increasing crit rate, so it's going to be really good, you know, if you don't have the best crit rate, because, like, you don't have your weapon level all the way up, or you just don't have the best crit rate on your artifact, you literally have an uh, increased 50% crit rate after doing your elemental burst, and if you have an electro build, you're going to be spamming elemental burst, especially if you have a battery on the team, and also, having energy recharge increased by 50% makes it even better, because you're basically, like, going to get this back immediately, especially if you have a battery on the team. So it's going to make her a electro, literally electro monster. She's going to be putting out a lot of electro damage. This character is definitely a really good DPS. If you want to use her as support, I'm pretty sure that can be possible. You can definitely try that out. But let's go ahead and go over Xiao and then determine why or why you should not summon on Kaching's banner and why you should, you know, probably skip this and save after you get Xiao if you get Xiao. Or basically, who wins Xiao or Kaching, which, like I said, all of you probably already know. Now we have Zhao. He has not been updated too much. He still has the same stat progression with the crit rate, as you all know. Now, the reason this character is so good, the reason this character, everybody's getting this character, is really, you guys are probably saying, I mean, you, you guys probably already know if you've been in my comment section about all the Zhao videos I've made. Literally, everybody's getting him. Doesn't care about the damage. Doesn't care about any of that nature. They care about his, basically, like, his lore. They care about his character design. They care about his voice actor. Yes. But... Overall, you guys, even though you're looking over the skills and whatnot he has, I'm going to go ahead and show you this guy is still insane. And the reason I say this is for uh, the stat progression being crit rate, like they changed this from animal to crit rate. I feel like it's very beneficial. It was sad to see animal go, but at the same time, the crit rate has come in clutch because that makes us to where we're, we're prone to building a, what do I want to call it, uh, a little crit damage build with like 200% crit damage if possible, or like 180 since he doesn't have a base of, you know, 30. So it'll be like 180, 170% crit damage, and then you'll have like, you know, 40% crit rate if you have a, you know, weapon that has crit rate, or if you just like get lucky with a lot of substats of crit rate. So anyway, he's gonna have a really good crit rate build, uh, crit rate already, so you really wanna build for crit damage if you possibly can, and definitely that would be very beneficial. So anyway, let's go ahead and discuss this character. As you do know, you know his Yaksha form literally bases him off plunge damage. The reason his character is so different, so crazy, and the reason he is a festival, basically festival exclusive in my opinion for how they're releasing him on this festival, is because of how different he is. The approach that they are taking on characters is changing more and more each patch, but this tops the cake. And the reason I say this is because him being able to be a unit that can transform not his weapon, you know, not any, not anything that they're holding. He transforms his whole physical, everything about his normal attacks, everything about his charge attacks, everything about his jump, everything about his color, everything about his aesthetic. He changes everything. This character is absolutely really, really, really well designed. This was actually the first character I seen when I first started playing uh, Genshin Impact, and I thought he was in the game, and I was really sad when they said he's not coming for like literal months. So anyway, I was really sad, but I was definitely a Zhao stan before Zhao was even, you know, everybody knew who he was and everything. It was insane. But anyway, definitely a really good character for the fact that the low slash high plunge damage will be in a really, really good place. And you're probably saying, why? Well, if you don't know, it's because of his jumping ability being increased in the Aksha Mask. The Aksha Mask is a very, very overpowered thing that he can do while it's his burst, basically. He, he really, honestly, is a god when he goes into this form. If you want to be honest, because he increases his AOE, his attack AOE and attack damage. He converts all his damage to animal damage. It cannot be overridden by any other elemental infusion. In this state, he will lose current HP by the second. And that's not a lot at all since it's current HP. And this effect uh, skill ends when Zhao leaves the field or when he dies. Okay, so uh, basically, guys, the reason this is so good is because recently or not recently, recently, but they made an update on him where it used to be normal charge. Now it's plunging. So, this is good because the plunge damage he can do, like, just based off this right here, for, if you're at level, let's say, 10, that's a realistic number at level 6, level 10, 323% low plunge damage, 
and then high plunge damage 404 percent and then you're getting an attack bonus for that plunge plunge attack right so let's say level 10 95 percent 95.2 percent increased you know attack damage bonus that is absolutely insane it's gonna do a lot of damage this form lasts for 15 seconds so you'll be able to literally just throw this out like a lot because of the honestly the fact that i think you could throw this out a lot is once you're in this form you will be getting energy back still right and also another thing to note is running him with a battery is actually probably going to be comp we'll see once he comes out i'm going to test him with a lot i'm going to test him with albedo venti all that you know and see exactly what he needs or what he's going to be performing really well with but basically he's extremely extremely dependent on this yaksha form because of all they can do so the energy cost being 70 kind of sucks but at the same time he gets a lot of energy back from lymphatic one cycling especially if you have an energy battery on the team he gets a lot of energy back having the two charges are is insane both of them have a 10 second cooldown individually so like you're looking at a full 20 seconds if you use both charges at the same time or like you know you know <laughs> y'all know what i'm saying so anyway yeah and also another thing to know about is yaksha mask why it's so why it's so good why this character is someone you must skip catching over you you just gotta just summon for Jao, guys. He's literally the festival festival banner. So anyway, uh, while under the effects of Bane of All Evil, all damage dealt by Jao is increased by 5% as soon as you go into your elemental burst. And then the damage increases by 5% every 3 seconds. So after 12 seconds, you have a maximum damage bonus of 25%. And then you'd have at level 10 or, you know, whatever level you are on your talents, you'd have that attack bonus for your normal charge and plunge damage. And, you know, that, that that's going to make you so, so strong. Because, like, if you have a high level, say, for example, 15 uh you have 117.95 percent increased normal attack charge attack and plunging attack damage bonus so that plus the 25 percent maximum damage bonus is just gonna make you a monster and you got three seconds to spam that man and then also another thing to know is basically on his passives i feel like definitely like uh this con constellation wise character you don't need constellation maybe constellation one is really beneficial but uh, really where he's like insane is Constellation 6, which is really unrealistic for a free play player. So Constellation 1 is really good. But anyway, like I was saying, this is literally insane because on his passives, they're like Constellations themselves. And the reason I say this is because of how they both buff his damage. This buffs his elemental burst and this buffs his elemental skills damage. And what I mean by that is basically after you use one limb scattered when cycling his elemental skill, the next one's increased by 15%. Uh, damage or max the it increases the damage of the next one by 50% is what I'm trying to say and this effect lasts for seven seconds which has been buffed and it has a maximum of three stacks so having constellation one would be very ideal but if you can't get constellation one you could time this you don't necessarily need exactly three charges to get the maximum of three stacks you just have to time it with the two charges you have so anyway these are the essential materials if you want to take a picture uh, if you want to pause or take a picture screenshot whatever so anyway like I was saying though this character in my opinion it's just something you cannot skip you all cannot skip another thing to note is these materials uh, if you want if you have questions about them because I know some people have questions these are from the Primal Geo Vice Shops. If I'm pronouncing that right, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But these are from the new boss that's going to be incorporated in 1.3. So we have to wait for those to come out. But these are the materials of grind, the animal, hypostasis, these from Liyue, uh, slimes, and more, of course. So anyway, between both of these characters, the battle of Kaching and the battle of Zhao, I'm pretty sure everybody knows the answer of who you should get. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. You should get Zhao. And the reason I say this is because he is a festival exclusive. We, we have no idea when there will be a Zhao rerun. Now, on the other side, which is Kaching, she has a standard banner. Let me go ahead and show you this banner. As you can see, this is the banner right here. This is what we have right now. Kaching, Mona, Chi Chi, and all the other five stars. These are not rated up, of course, guys. But what I'm trying to tell you is that these characters are in the standard wish banner. And like I said, you can acquire these, uh, these acquaint feints just by leveling up characters and ascending them. So what I have to say about this is you have multiple, multiple opportunities to get Kaching. You even have opportunities in other banners. You probably could pull Kaching in, in Zhao's banner if you get lucky and pull Zhao. So that's what I'm saying. Definitely don't waste your, do not waste Intertwined Fate on Kaching that's rated up. I know you guys are probably like, like, oh my God, but wait, on standard banner, she's not rated up, but she's going to have her, her own rated up banner. It's really, really good. Well, if you're not a Kaching main, okay, if you're a Kaching main, I, uh, Catching okay, Kaching main, I understand. I understand if you want to go, if you want to get more constellation, maybe. But that's if you're a well. If you're not a well, if you're a free to play player, you should go for Zhao. The reason I say this is because festival character, he is absolutely insane. Has really good aesthetic. No one in this game cannot like this character, in my opinion. Uh, maybe those Ayaka simps out there, which are pretty rare nowadays since Hu Tao has taken over. 
but basically what I'm saying is literally this character is not coming back for a very long time especially since he's gonna be with the Lantern Festival and whatnot it's just it, it, the odds of getting this is insane but with Kaching, you have multiple opportunities in multiple banners every single banner actually every in, every intertwined fate banner every acquaint faint banner uh, banner you have a chance to get Kaching, but not Zhao you only have one chance to get him and that will be on February the 3rd till February the 17th or yeah February the 17th so what I say is you go for Zhao 100% festival exclusive character in my opinion that's how it seems uh, so it's definitely definitely gonna be worth it to go for him and for sure it's good he's gonna be a very fun unit um, I'm sorry for everybody out there that you know was thinking of getting Kaching. You probably still think you want to get Kaching, but like I said, you have so many opportunities to get this character. It makes no sense. I feel like you should go for the character that you're not going to be able to get until the rerun, which will possibly either happen in like probably in like eight months, maybe or more than a year. So it'll probably take a while. So I feel like definitely, guys, like I said, please summon for Zhao. He is the unit you want. He is the unit you need to summon for. This is not even a competition. Kaching versus Zhao. Zhao wins automatically. Everybody knew that already, though. So, anyway, that's really about it for this video. Like I said, guys, do not waste your Primal Gems on this banner because it will be a very, very big mistake, in my opinion, because of what's coming. And plus, if they are incorporating a third banner in 1.3, which they might since they're only out of two out of three to be continued update, uh, I feel like you should literally stay clear. Get Zhao if you possibly can. Then save the rest of your primals. Stay clear. Keep saving. Do the events to get more primals. Do the event to, or, you know, log in seven days to get the all the 10 Intertwined Fate. Save those 10 Intertwined Fate if you have Zhao to go ahead and go for the third banner if there will be a third banner, uh, banner in 1.3, which there most likely will be, like I said, guys. And if you guys are thinking that it's Zhongli, what I have to say about the Zhongli situation is because, or is, that Zhongli is a funeral parlor too. If you think that they say okay china is not gonna allow funeral parlors to participate in the lantern rite festival or in the chinese new year festival then you are basically saying why 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 is only allowed to go then there's not gonna be as only rerun probably no time soon and if there is i'll be extremely surprised if it is the third banner of this that would be insane but like i said i feel like zonely's rerun is not gonna be probably anytime soon maybe and they're definitely if they can release so uh, zhongli they can release hu tao because they're both funeral parlors and that's the end of the discussion and another thing to note is i commented this under my original post you guys are saying so much about how hu tao's chances of actually being in 1.3 are so slim because she has to deal with death well guys if you didn't know the lore of my boy right here this man has killed countless of people so if anything he's not even supposed to be in this update so that definitely, if that doesn't open your eyes to say that a funeral parlor cannot come into the update or can come into the update is what I meant, then I, I don't know what does. He's literally murdered a lot of people or a lot of monsters or whatever, and that's dealing with a lot of death. And if that were the case for this Lantern Festival, they would not allow this to be a summonable, ba a summonable banner. So for sure, and also, like I said, I've done a lot of research on how the festivals work and how people that deal with death have to go through a ritual in order to go into the festival and they have the taboos and they have all the forbidden things like grief they can't do grief they can't pick up knives they can't there's a lot you can't do but like i said one of them things is not they're not gonna ban a funeral parlor and their death if they're not banning my boy Zhao, which has killed like so many even though he is a god guys yes he's a god he's killed so many still now i have to deal with death okay so but like i said though we'll see what they have to come but for sure, if they're putting him in, I feel like reassured. I feel really reassured that they will put Hu Tao in in the third part of the update, most likely. But we'll see. Uh, this is just speculation still. So take it with an assault. We'll see what actually happens, what actually conspire. I mean, transpires. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's really about it for this video. We will definitely see what happens. But for sure, summon for Zhao. Without a doubt, guys, don't even question yourself. This character is the character you want. And this character is not coming back for a very long time, and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to want this character after you see what he's capable of, after you see all those videos of the showcases. So anyway, guys, that's really about it for this video. I'm really grateful for everybody who came out to watch this video, and I hope this did help you, even though most of you probably already knew this answer. Going over the characters a little bit before they both come out is pretty insane, even though Kaching's been out for a long time. If you didn't know about Kaching, I'm, I hope I helped you out, like, learning about her a little bit. 
And also, if you didn't know about Zhao, I hope you, I helped you out with that too as well. But yeah, for sure, like I said, you should definitely get Zhao and skip this banner right here and see what the third part of the update has to come in store. What are they surprising us with? What are they pranking us with? If possible. So anyway, guys, thank you for everybody who came out to watch this video. If you are new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Join the subscribers on the grind to 2,700 because I know you enjoyed this video and you know you want to subscribe, baby. You know, you know this, man. Anyway, smash that like button, cut the notifications on to be notified of all my daily uploads, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.